Still a slave in this bloody city. Still a slave in this bloody city. It's going down, I ain't going with it. It's going down, I ain't going with it. It's going down, I ain't going with it. You ain't getting right, then you go. All right, Shalom family, most high in Christ, bless. Officer Yehoshua from IUIC, Virginia, to my right. Officer Kyle. All right, now we out here at Norfolk State University for their homecoming event. <laughs> Cuts from the street. Oh, so we got to deal with their minds. All of our people come out here to these homecoming events, to tailgate, uh, to watch the football game. All right, and uh, most of these people attended HBCUs. Put it down. Higher, baby. Put them up. 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 All right, so we want to find out. Uh, who we are according to the Bible and if they know. We want to find out if they know who we are according to the Bible. That's probably good. Yeah. All right, we're here with Cuts from the Street at Norfolk State University Homecoming. I'm your Yehoshua. Who do I have right here to my right? Alana. Alana. Ariana. Timberly. Aloran. Talia. Big Dog Nine. <laughs> Big Dog Nine. Okay, all right, all right. So they about to get it going. They about to get it going. Who do I have here with me? Monica. I got Monica. Alasia. A Monica and Alasia. Who do I have with me? Marcellus from Scott Dozier Thompson Hospitality. They've been here for nearly 12 to 13 years. Okay, Marcella, been here for about 13 years as a, as an employee. Yeah. All right, so we are here at Norfolk State University. Big state. D state. Big state for cuts from the streets. That's what we're doing out here, all right? So, who do I have here with me today? Roy and Marcus. Roy and Marcus. All right. All right. So it's Yehoshua here with Cuts from the Street at Norfolk State University. And who do I have with me today? Eartha Garrett. Eartha Garrett. So what brings you out this weekend? I never miss a homecoming. Never miss it? Never miss it. All right. So what brings y'all out here? It's a lot of y'all. I probably pick different questions for different of y'all. All right. So what brings y'all out this weekend? Um, well, it's homecoming, you know, we're freshmen, so HBC homecoming, we had to come. Okay, everybody a freshman? Yes. Okay, all right. What are you looking forward to for this homecoming? Um, I'm looking forward to the band, the black experience, uh, hopefully us winning today, but just experiencing the Spartan culture. That's what it is. Okay, the Spartan culture. Okay, I like that. Somebody tell me about the Spartan culture. It's just the HBCU experience, you know. Okay, all right, HBCU experience. I like that. So what brings you to Norfolk State University this weekend? I mean, I'm a student. I got grandparents. I see my grandparents over there. My dad went here, so it's kind of like a legacy thing for me. So I got to be here. I got to I'm here because my family's here as well. And it's a great college. Love it here. And it's homecoming. We outside. We outside. And it's homecoming. It's homecoming. We outside. I'm an alumni of Norfolk State. Alumni of Norfolk State. Back in the 80s. Alumni of Norfolk State back from the 80s, all right? And current senior at Hampton University, all right? So, question for both of you all. The people want to know why you chose to go to a HBCU opposed to a predominantly white institution. Family. My family, most of my families came from here. So when they were here and I was younger, I used to go to the, like the step shows and all the basketball games, the football games. And again, the vibe was still the same. And it was, it was us doing what we do. And I just gravitated towards that. I love that. So HBCU, it stands for Historically Black College and University, right? So I'd like to get two of y'all to answer. What made you all choose an HBCU instead of a PWI, primarily white institution. Her hand went up first, what you got? Okay, so I'm the really the first one um, out of my family to go to college, but my brother, like he, he, brother from another mother, he's actually the president, he inspired me more to go to an HBCU, like and more be involved in campus. And you know, like why not? You know, it's better when you do it together and that's what Spartans do, they do it together instead of one person doing it by himself. I like that. I like that. The sister said it's better when you do it together. Who else want to answer that one? Yeah, okay, for me, 
I've grown up going to PWIs most of my life. and it's So you're around a lot of white people growing up? Yes. You want to change the scenery? Yes, it does not give you the same experience at all as being around your own people. And when I come to an HBCU, especially in Norfolk State, I feel like I'm around my family. Like, I just feel natural and I feel like I'm at home. That's why I chose to come to HBCU. Okay, I like that. feel like we're around family. Anybody else wanted to answer that one? Why you chose an HBCU and not a white college? I went to mostly PWIs too, and I didn't like the feeling of just being in that situation all the time. So I was like, okay, if I go to like a HBCU, I'll have more fun and feel like I belong more so. I got you, got you. At a PWI, you feel like an outsider, but at a HBCU, you feel like you're around family. As a general consensus? All right, all right. Um, also family, I had three siblings before me go to Hampton, so it was mostly like seeing them at Hampton and just being on campus before that, I could really sense the community, um, just like, and being able to just celebrate like your blackness, whether you're light skin, dark skin, it really didn't matter. And I had already experienced like the PWI experience just like throughout from elementary school all the way up to high school. So I just completely love the whole change of vibe going to an HBCU. I love it. You see, I have to say because of, you know, it's just like a family atmosphere. Like you come outside, just like good people, good vibes. It's just something that you can't find at a, at a PWI. It's just different. You just gotta be here to experience it. Okay, okay. Marcus, what you got for the people? Like he said, the first visit we took here, it felt like family. People are good. The teachers are good. It's just like, it's just different. It's your own culture. You see your own people every day. It feels good to be around it. Who do the HBCUs teach that we are? They teach that we are the original first people that's on this earth. From what I have understood. Marcus, what have you learned about your identity at Norfolk State University since you've been here? We're stronger together. We're stronger together. We Black people, so-called black people, stronger together, right? I like that. All praises. So I've got a question for you, Miss Eartha. Um, what, um, what are some things that the HBCUs, maybe particularly Norfolk State, are doing for the black community? I think they're doing a whole lot for the black communities because at one point, especially when I was going to school, this was really our only opportunity for education. So they gave all of us a great start and the opportunity to get a higher education after high school. Okay, so giving the black community an opportunity to get a higher level of education. Okay. In your education, I know you said that was 1988. What, uh... What are some things that stuck with you from your education here at Norfolk State? Well, one thing is one thing I always tell people: it's easy to get into Norfolk State, but it's very hard to get out of it. Oh wow! The instructors take it serious. You had to do your studies. Work was the first and most important aspect of Norfolk State. Okay. All right, that's good. Question I have regarding Norfolk State University, because this is an HBCU. What is H? What is uh? What are the HBCUs? teaching us as far as our identity, where we come from, where we began, who are we? What is the HBCU teaching us, Alasia? Hmm, as far as our identity? Well, for Hampton, it really just, we try to expand upon just like being as like, just as naturally black as you are, like just pretty much just expressing like um, the language, that, like how we speak, like not trying to like whitewash like the way we dress, the way we speak, or just like our style in general. So it just teaches you just to just celebrate pretty much like your black culture. Are you familiar with Kanye West? Yes, I like his music. Oh, no. yeah, yes, uh, I know where y'all are going with the White Lives Matter. You see, I didn't like that way that the White Lives Matter because I understand like some people they be like yeah his wife was white so his kids have white this and that but nah you just can't as a as a black man you can't do that like 400 years of slavery and all that stuff that people had to carry in their back just for you to wear something like that nah you just, you just can't do that bro you can't do that. now marcus are you are you familiar with kanye west not the situation that you're talking about okay all right now recently kanye west do you know who he is oh yeah Okay, so he made a statement recently that's caused a lot of uh, controversy in, on social media. Do you remember what he said? Ash 
lane that I have no idea except for that I know he went with the, the Republican Party, and so that's about up. Who's familiar with Kanye West? Everybody? Everybody? Okay. Kanye West tweeted something this week. Who's familiar with the, what his tweet said? Nobody? All Lives Matter. Well, he had a shirt on that said White Lives Matter. Yeah, everybody saw that? But he had tweeted this week. I'm going to read a tweet to you, all right? Now give me a second. I'm going to read a section of the tweet, and I want y'all to tell me what y'all think, all right? All right, the section of the tweet says... Well, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and read the whole thing, since y'all hadn't read it. Y'all hadn't heard it. It says, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going Death Con 3 on Jewish people. All right? Y'all heard that? Okay. Then the next part, it says, the funny thing is, I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually the Jews. What do y'all think about that? I think he's just confused. He don't know. He just like he just saying anything at this point. You think he's confused? Yeah. Try to get some attention. Who else got a thought about his statement? Is that Big Dog Nah? Oh, nah, you know. I feel like people like him just want to talk, talk, talk. If you actually want to think about it, it goes deeper within the Jews and Christianity. It's never just, oh, yeah, everybody has their own religion, but for you to point it out, it's not. It's bigger. It goes deeper than that. So you can't really call them out and you don't know what you're talking about. You just. So you're just talking. Okay. Are you familiar with Kanye West? Yeah, of course. Okay, all right. Kanye West made a statement in the news uh, recently on Twitter. Um, are you familiar? with what he said? No. Okay. Uh, I'd like to read the tweet to you if that's all right. At least a portion of it. All right. Let me uh, let me pull it up on my... You got it pulled up? All right. So we just want that middle part. Uh. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jews. All right, did you hear that? He, he said that he can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually the real Jews. What do you think about that, Sister Earth? I really don't put a lot of thought into too much that Kanye is saying. I mean, I, all I can do is pray for the brother because that, make, that statement makes no sense. You said it makes no sense? It makes no sense. Kanye West said that the Jews are black and he can't be anti-Semitic because he himself is also a Jew. That's what he said. Now, have you ever heard that before? I have, but I, I ain't really looking into it for real, for because that was out of my that was out of my field, so I won't really looking into that Jewish type stuff. So I just sat down and just watched. I just sat down and watched. Okay. Sometimes nah. You gotta, sometimes you just gotta observe. There you go. All right. <laughs> Marcus, what you got? This is my first time hearing it, but I have he heard words similar a line like that. To the, what he was saying. Okay, so recently he said, he made a statement and he said that, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, he said that the Jews were black. And that offended a lot of people. What do you think about that? Um, well, I have heard of that history, but I haven't really seen the actual truth that the original Jews were black, but I do understand that life started in Africa in the Garden of I mean, Eden. Uh, so, um, I, and I will have to say that the black race is recognized as the dominant race, and so a According to Kanye West, of course there's going to be some controversial about that because nobody wants to be left out. Right. And I can understand that. Monica. Um, I, I love Kanye for his, uh, his individuality. Um, Jewish people, I think people get it confused. Jews are not a race of people. Jew is... To be Jewish is it's a culture, it's a religion more so than anything else. Of course, you can be a black Jew. I don't know what his religion is, but it's not impossible to be that. So, I mean, Kanye is Kanye. 
I, I, that's all I can say about Kanye. So, I, I agree, like, there are black Jews. Now, as far as whether the Jews were black, I, like I said, I think Jewish, being Jewish is more so like a religion rather than um, just straight up saying like, oh, the Jews are black, so I can't be anti-Semitic. I feel like that's where, that's what's really rubbing people the wrong way. Let's focus in on the part of the statement where he says, uh, the real Jews are black. Who has a thought about that? So, I'm guessing, like she said, going deeper into Christianity, like during biblical times, the Jews would have been of color. Oh, okay. So during biblical times, the Jews would have been of color. So that means that some of us, the people now that are of color, are descended from them. But I also feel like... That's a that's a very good point you make. Yeah, but I feel like he can't say that because um, at the same time, there's a different set. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the, the people that are Jews now are different than the people that were Jews then. That's what I think. And so him saying that he can't be anti-Semitic, I think that's very false because I feel like you can be a Jew and be anti-Semitic. Okay, you feel like you can be a Jew and be anti-Semitic. All right. So the part that I wanted to talk about is that you made a statement. You said that during biblical times, the Jews were black. Have you ever known a race of people to start out black and then change to be a different color? <laughs> yeah, I think that most the human race really yeah. did start from black. The cradle. Uh, well, let, let me let my sister hit. I think that the human race really did start from black people. Like, okay, the human race started black. Right. Like, I don't know exactly what to quote, but I've heard much evidence about how the human race is descended from black people. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a fact. Anybody else had a thought about that? The cradle of civilization. You got a lot of thoughts today. The cradle, of, the cradle of civilization is in Africa, and the first uh, human was found in Africa. So there's history to back that up, and when they migrated, that's how different races began to form. Okay, so when they migrated, they changed complexions. Okay, so I know a lot of times uh, white people have migrated to South America a long time ago. All right, we lost one. Y'all want to tighten up for me a little bit? All right. Uh, white people migrated to South America. How do they look today? Darker complected. Okay, the last time I checked the South American, they were still white, though. I don't think they are. You don't think so? South Americans? Yeah, South Africans. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm tripping. White people migrated to South Africa. What do they look like today? That was after the original, like, huge migration that changed races. They went down there afterward and colonized down there. So if a whole bunch of them went down there, their race wouldn't have changed that much. Okay, okay. So during biblical times, the Jews were black. All right, anybody believe in the Bible here? All right, you believe in the Bible? You raise your hand. All right, I want to read a scripture to you. All right, who knows what Jew is short for? The word Jew, it's an abbreviated term that's short for something else. Does anybody know? Judaism? Judaism? Uh, Say it louder. Judaism? Close, close. It's... That's close, it's close. Jew is short for Judah. Jew is short for Judah. Now, Judah is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Anybody heard of the 12 tribes of Israel? Right, I'm going to read to you out of the Bible a biblical description about what the Jews look like. All right? Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof length. So this verse is talking about Judah. Yeah. They are black yeah, yeah. unto the ground. So the Bible says that the real Jews are black unto the ground. All right. Now, I like the point that you had made. You said that during biblical times they were black, but they look different now. Now, I'm going to read another scripture to you that tells us about the people who claim to be Jewish today. Now, y'all are educated sisters, right? So uh, let's take it back to English class, right? Grammar, right? A suffix. Let's talk about a suffix. Something that you put at the end of a word, right? The suffix ish, I-X-H. What does that mean? Mm, yeah, I don't know exactly, but I think oh, oh. it's like partially. It means partially, not fully, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I say something is black-ish, is it really black? It's kind of black. But it's not really black. Okay. Now, if I say uh, class starts at what time? On Tuesdays? Class starts at 9.30. If I say I'm going to be there at 9.30-ish, am I going to be there at 9.30? No. It's not going to be 9.30. Okay. So if I say that I'm Jewish, 
Am I really a Jew? No. No, I'm not a Jew. Now, let's see what the Bible says about the people who claim to be Jews today that don't look like the biblical description, Revelation 2 and 9. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them. So the Bible says, I know the blasphemy of them. Which say they are Jews Which say they are Jews And are not And are not really Jews So if somebody says that they're a Jew But they're really not a Jew Based on English class They will be called what? Jewish Jewish So the Jewish people that don't match the biblical description Are they really Jews? No Because the real Jews are what? They're black They are black Right so is Kanye West just trying to get attention or is he maybe trying to wake his people up to understand something? He probably is, but if you're going to do that, you need to have like some information because it's quick that people doubt it and they be like, oh, he just talking like we thought he was just talking at first, but now we actually know what it goes back to. We're actually more interested and we more taking it to thought. I like y'all sisters. I really like y'all sisters. I really like y'all sisters. Now here's the million dollar question. Did you know that the Bible says that the Jews are black. Yes. No, no, I didn't know. I didn't know. Marcus. No, I didn't know you that. You did not know that. Now, Roy, Marcus, do you mind if we show that to you in the Bible? Yes, sir. Yeah, you can. Can we get a, can we get the scripture? What we're trying to do today is show our people the hidden truths that I found in plain sight when you open the Bible. All right? Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. So this is talking about who? Jews, right? Jew, Jews. Jews. The Jews, right? Jew is short for Judah. That's where that term comes from. So the Bible is saying that the Jews mourn, right? Why? Why do the Jews mourn? Why do you think? So why do they mourn? I don't know. Because they're black? Okay. They get beat, so they they cry, I guess. Okay. Marcus, why do the why do why do you think the Jews mourn? I don't know. I don't have. I'm not big on religious. Like I don't go to. Church. Well, you know the Jews are black. Right? Yeah. So what type of things are causing our people to mourn in the streets? Death, police brutality, not enough opportunities as uh, as the other white people in front of us. Just a whole lot, man. It's a it's just a whole lot, and it's sad, but you know. We working together. We pushing forward with our black leaders trying to make a change. So, yeah. Read it again. Judah mourneth. The Jews mourn because they're all the things that Roy said, right? They impoverished, getting shot down in the streets, living in the ghettos, hard to get a job, hard to get education, right? Come on. And the gates thereof languish. They are black. What color are the Jews? They are black. Marcus, you ever heard that before? No, sir. But what, what, what did we just read? A scripture from the Bible. A scripture from the Bible. They say the Jews are what color, Roy? They black. They black. They black. Real, real black. Real bad. They what? They black real bad. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You've heard the Jews are black. And it makes sense that the Jews are black. Because... The so-called black people dominate everything, but you haven't seen the proof of it, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, and everybody here that's in America wants to be black, so the capital of the United States is the black people, and the capital of the world is the United States. The capital of the world is the United States. This is the city that's running the whole earth, right? And dominant race in the United States. That's right. Everybody wants to be black. Now, do you think this country would be what it is without the so-called black race? Oh, no. No. America would not even exist without the people of color. Specifically, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes. Exactly. Right. Judah Morning. And the gates thereof languish. And their leaders languish, meaning that they are in poverty. 
They are in mourning. Right? They're in a lower state. You understand? Physically and mentally. Right? That's what's going on here. Now, does that sound like black people today? No. Let's think about what types of things cause mourning in our community. Right? STDs. What community has the most STDs? Right now, uh, the surround here would have to be uh, between Norfolk and Port Smoke. What what people is that is that sickness plaguing predominantly? The black community. Now, does that cause mourning? Yes, very much. Very much so. So, STDs is one asset, right, or facet of of our community that's causing our leaders to mourn. All right, now, what about crime? Would that cause the leaders of a community to mourn? Very much so, because it's skyrocketing. What communities, all I'm talking all over the earth, do you find the most crime? The black community. Now, as we stated, that's gonna cause our leaders to mourn. Very much so. So we talked about STDs, we talked about crime, right? And along with crime goes murder, right? Murder is happening in alarming rates. In what community? The black community. The same thing that went down during Malcolm S and Dr. King's days. Now are uh, black people killing black people, so-called black people killing black people, or are other nations coming into our community and killing us faster than we're killing ourselves? Which one is it? I'm going to have to say it's the black on black that's killing black people a lot faster than anybody else. Judah Morneth. Now the term Jew comes from people. People. Say it again. The people. The people. Who is the people? Judah. Judah. That's where the term Jew comes from. Jew is short for Judah. That's where that comes from, right? Why would our leaders be in mourning? Okay. Right? You got to ask yourself, what's going on in the black community? Right? What's going on in our community? There's no community that has more STDs than our community. Did you know that? Right? Um, black on black crime. There's no such thing as a. Uh, you ever heard of Jewish on Jewish crime? Right, no. Never. Israeli on Israeli? Never. Right? But you hear of black. You hear that all day long. Right? Murder is happening in our community. Is it not? It is. Are these same things happening in the Jewish community? Yes, to some degree but not as much in the black community. Um, and the Bible says, what color are they? They are black unto the ground. Black like the ground, like the dirt, right? So right here in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse two, what color does the Bible say that the Jews are? Black. Is that difficult to understand? No. M Monica, was that difficult to understand? Not at all. In our community, we reject the Bible. A lot of us do. And by that, I mean the keeping of God's commandments, right? Yeah. So I want to go back to the scripture because we're not talking about the Jewish people that are in mourning. The Bible says that the Jews are in mourning because of all those things we discuss. So you have to ask yourself, what people is this Bible talking about? Is this talking about? The people that we call Jewish and Israelis, is this talking about them or is this talking about us? That's what we have to ask ourselves, right? Remember what we're talking about. We're talking about what's causing our people to mourn in our communities, right? The types of things we think of is murder. We think of crime. We think of STDs. We think of uh, little boys growing up without a father. We think of baby mamas, right? These things are stereotypes for who? Black people. Right, these things are stereotypes for who? Black people. Right, so we have to change that. And Lord's will, we will. But as of now, this has become 
a stereotype on us, right? Yes. It has. Yes. So would that cause the leaders of our community to mourn or, or to be to be happy? Um, it, it would cause. It should cause our leaders to mourn. To mourn. Yeah. The Bible also says that the Jews are in mourning. Those people are not in mourning. They own financially, right? They have ownership of most of the world. They own the media, right? They're not in mourning. They have a country. They have a language, right? They have a heritage, right? They have all of these things. They have leaders in their communities that's not entertainers or ball players, right? They have their own businesses, right? They can buy real estate, right, without a loan, right? They can receive loans from themselves, right? That, does that sound like a state of mourning for those people? No, not at all. But the Bible says that the Jews are black and that they're in mourning. I'm going to show you a scripture about those people pretending to be you, right? That, that, that people that stole your culture and left you with a homecoming, left you with Christmas, left you with your birthday, robbed you from what God gave you. Yeah. How we let somebody take something that God gave to us? Fear. What was it? Fear. 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 Fear, right? If you see your son and your daughter taken from you and sold to another plantation, right? A man tied up, one horse on this leg, another horse on this leg, horse on, and they pull his body apart and, and tell the, 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 the little boy, look, you better listen, the same thing will happen to you. Absolutely. That's going to incite, what was it that you called it? Fear. That's going to incite fear on us. Absolutely. You agree with that, right, Alasia? Right? So that's what, that's our history. That's what happened to us. That's how we exchanged our culture. We exchanged it, right? It was it was it was beaten into us until we accepted it. It was not an option, not an option right. right? Read what you got. This is the book of Revelation, chapter two and verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation. So the Bible says that I know your works and your tribulation. Tribulation is hardships, struggle. What what race of people? has a history of struggle greater than the so-called black man. Who is known for enduring the greatest struggle on earth? Black people. Black people. So who is the Lord talking to right here? Black people. Black people. Read it again. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Who is on the bottom of the society? We the greatest in everything that we do, but we're held in the lowest state. Who is that? Is that the Jewish people? They held in the lowest state? No. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. Read on. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy means lies. So God says he knows the lies. Come on. Of them. Of them. Would say they are Jews. Of a, he, God knows the lies of a people that say that they are Jews and are not. But they really aren't. That's deep. This is the Bible we're reading. So there's a people on the earth today saying that they are Jews and they're not. But they're doing all the Jew things. They got the Jew clothes on. They got the Jew diet. They got the Jew high holy days, right? They have the Jew names, right? right. We don't have any of these things. Right. But God says the Jews are black. That's what we read in the Bible, right? Come on. But are the synagogue of Satan. The Bible says that those people that did that are the synagogue of Satan. Does the HBCU teach that the so-called blacks are the Jews like we read in the Bible? No, they do not. Okay. Well, we hope one day that they will. That they will. We hope one day these HBCUs will teach 
states that the scriptures tell us we are the Jews, right? Because we need an identity. So what's the plan for the night? What's everybody doing tonight? I'm <laughs> turning up. Going with the flow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, whatever the night takes, takes us. Yeah. Yeah. Big dog, where are we going tonight? We going, we outside tonight. Okay, okay, okay. Today we're celebrating the homecoming at Norfolk State University. How are the people going to have a good time tonight? You said how? Yeah, what are people going to do today, tonight, to have a good time at the homecoming? What type of things are going to be going on? Want to get the real answer? I want the raw, real, uncut. Well listen, well listen, as you can see, as you can see, I got a cup right now. And he got a cup. We got food. It's, it's, it's men, it's women, it's music. Oh my bad, it's men, it's women, it's music. We all lost out, like, as you can see, look, look where you at. Look, look where you at, bro. It's big state energy, man. You know what I'm saying? What you got to say? You see it. Everybody got a cup in their hand. Even the old heads out here with a cup in their hand. We out here enjoying life. It's just family vibes. Listen, vibe, after man. the game, family vibe, that's bro. when it get real. What's people going to be doing to have a good time tonight? Um, Most of these people is going to be tore down and doing it up and shoring their booties and ignorance and doing whatever. All right. What are, what are people going to do to have a good time tonight at the homecoming? Party. What, what's that entail? <clears throat> uh, what's that entail? For some, it's smoking and drinking and dancing and, you know, talking about good times, old times, new times, future times. It's just people getting together and just to do what they do. So, Marcus, how do you think God feels about the homecoming? Um... I would say, I don't know, I can't, <laughs> that's, that's a hard I feel like, I feel like, I mean like, I mean it's, it's made, homecoming is made to have fun, but I feel like, just like the violence part, that what makes it not, not of God, like the violence part. Do you remember the days of Noah? And what was going on during that time? Uh, the days of it, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. You know as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, same thing. The things that are going on at homecoming right now. How do y'all think God feels about what's happening at homecoming? I don't think he likes some of it. Yeah, some of it is a little bit controversial, but I think that he's glad to see like our culture coming together and gathering. Okay, coming together. The Bible, where people gather, there's that's where God is. Okay, okay. Now, even even more so when those people gather and are doing godly things, God will definitely be there as well, right? The earth is going to be destroyed again. Y'all know that, right? This time it's going to be destroyed with... Uh, now, fire. There you go. Say it again, Monica. Fire. This time it's going to be destroyed with fire. The earth's going to be destroyed with fire this time. Right? Read on. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. God says the same things that's going on or that went on during the time of Noah is going to be going on right now. And when I come, I'm going to destroy the earth again. Just like I destroyed it last time. Right? And then a lot of people is going to die. Just like last time, there was a whole earth full of people. Eight souls were saved. Right? This time it's going to be a horde full of people and only a remnant of people shall be saved. Right? For as in the days that were, excuse me, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So this is talking about the return of the Messiah. Right? Jesus Christ, a, a black, the, our black Messiah that's coming back to save us. He says it's going to be the same way it was when he returns as it was during the days of Noah. Right? What was going on during the days of Noah? We're going to read it. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating. They were eat people eating out here? Yeah, they eating. People feasting out here? Yeah, they getting their grub on. People getting their grub on, come on. And drinking. People, people drinking out here? They drinking. Yep. What kind of cups they using? Red cups. Red, <laughs> Red cups. Cup. Come on. 
marrying and giving in marriage. So people are going to be getting married, looking for a wife, right? Trying to lay down with something. Is that going on tonight? Hey, I'm just saying, I don't know what other people are doing. I know about me, though. Hey, I'm chilling. You doing that tonight? Let's keep reading the scripture. <laughs> Roy, you doing that tonight? Mark, no, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that disrespect. Are you doing that tonight? No, sir. He had a couple okay, of come on. <laughs> Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Until the day he entered, people was feasting, having a good time, enjoying themselves, right? Drinking, getting high, right? Come on. And knew not until the flood came. It wasn't until it was too late. Come on. And took them all away. And then the flood did what? Took them all away. What's that mean? Washed them away. Did they live or die? They was gone. Did they live or die? They died. They died. Right? We wanted to bring some awareness to the community. Now tell me one thing that you learned today. I learned that um, when you're the ish, you're not fully Jewish. You have to be... Biblically, we have to be black to be Jewish. Okay, I like that. I like that. My sister right here. What'd you learn today? I learned that we're all family as like a community. Like we're all one big happy family. And it's okay to be like who we are. Okay. And what did you learn about the tribe of Judah? Uh, <laughs> what do they look like? I'll make it easy. What, is, what, do, what do the real Jews look like? They're black. Okay. And what does it mean to be Jewish? Does that mean that you're really a Jew? Or you're not really a Jew? You're not really a Jew. Okay, okay. So the reason we come out here and do these types of interviews is just to gauge where the minds of our people are, right? Because we know and understand that there's another destruction coming to the earth. The first time it was with water, right? This time it's going to be with fire. There you go. Now, where's the fire going to come from? The crap, the earth. Where's the fire gonna come from? Marcus? I was gonna say the, the earth too. Out in the middle of the earth, like you know what I'm saying the ground start cracking, the um the outer mantle start burning, lava. Start Make it real plain for you, that way you know you never forget. Alright? This country that we live in is referenced as Babylon the Great when you read the scriptures. Right? The Bible's spoken in parable form and all of that. So when you read the scriptures, the Bible says that this land, Babylon the Great, will be destroyed with thermonuclear destruction. Those are missiles, ICBMs, right? Coming from many different countries to burn this place up with fire. Now, does it make sense how the earth is going to be destroyed? Because the primary weapon of war is what? Nuclear weapons. The primary weapons of war is what? Nuclear weapons. So how's the earth going to be destroyed? Nuclear weapon. There you go. So the fire isn't going to be coming from the ground unless those nuclear weapons cause that to cause the volcanoes to erupt, right? And gas lines to burst, which will happen. But we don't want all these people out here to be destroyed in that. You understand? Yes, sir. So our people need to learn God's commandments, right? We got to learn how the Bible tells us to live so we don't be destroyed during the days of Noah. How you feel about that? I feel good about it. What about, what about you, Marcus? I feel good. I like what y'all doing out here. This is actually a good thing because you're informing your own people. And you actually um, taught someone something today, and that someone is me. All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. So that's why we out here. So that's why we're out here. We want our people to, to go back into this book that we were told was a white man's book. Because it's not a white man's book. This book... It's our history book. This book is, is here for us to learn our culture. All right? You understand what I'm saying? So we, we, we challenge you today to, to go back inside that book. And we appreciate y'all's time. Thank y'all again. Can you tell the people your names one more time? Alana. Ariana. Timberly. Talia. Bit Dawn. And I remember, black is beautiful, but all together, every race is exceptional. All right. All right. We're going to try to reel it back in from that. All right? All right, anything y'all want to have for the people? Anything y'all want to say to the people for homecoming 2022? Oh, the green, green and gold. Happy homecoming 2022. We out here. Yeah. Class of 2026, yeah. NSU. Yeah. We take it home. All right, these sisters turned up, man. These sisters turned up. All praise to the most. I thank y'all for your time. Press from the streets, Norfolk State University. Any last words for the people? Um, As far as the Bible, though, I mean... Not only looking, not only look at what's in the Bible right now, but go and research. There are a lot of books that were taken out of the Bible as well. 
those are the ones that you really want to look into and research. Like the Apocrypha. That's the one that you need. Absolutely. And those are the ones that tell us as a people who we are. So that's right. Go for it. That's right. Monica's on to something. All right, get the Apocrypha. There's no way for us to know about the Greek captivity. All right? There's no way for us to know that the Spartans were Jews without the Apocrypha. We need the Apocrypha to know that. All right? All right, so I'm Officer Kyle with IUIC Virginia. And to my right, Officer Yehoshua. And we out here at Norfolk State University for their homecoming, 2022 homecoming, all right? Um, we got the film crew shirts on. Uh, we out here with the brothers. We had a successful cut from the streets. All right, stay tuned. All right, we spoke with uh, several brothers, several sisters about what's going on in the black community, all right? What the HBCUs are doing to help the black community and what things they're teaching us as far as our identity. All right, so stay tuned. Um, got some good feedback from the people. All right, and we want you to like, comment, subscribe, and share our YouTube content across all platforms. All right, so that we can push this truth to the four corners of the earth. You got something for him, officer? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, Officer Kyle, on that last interview, you had brought out an interesting point. We're at Norfolk State, and their, uh, uh, what do you call it? Oh, uh, mascot. Yeah, their mascot are the Spartans. The Spartans are their mascot. You had made a profound statement. You had said that the Spartans are the Jews. Could you go into that a little bit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so the Spartans, we read about it in First Maccabees. I think it's chapter 12. Yeah, let's get it. First Maccabees chapter 12. We want to make sure that we bring this out for you so that you can go home and research it. All right? We need to know who we are and, you know, and, and how all of this became what it is today. Read what you got. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 12, verse 20. Arius, king of the Lysodemonians. Of the who? Of the Lysodemonians. So the Bible calls the Spartans Lysodemonians, right? Lysodemonians. So you got to look that word up and see who are the Lysodemonians. Who are they? Read what you got. So you can just Google this, any dictionary, what have it. Lysodemonian. No, we're not finished with the script. Come on. The definition of Lysodemonian, a native or inhabitant of Lysodemonia, an area of ancient Greece comprising the city of Sparta and its surroundings. So it comprises the city of Sparta. All right. And for those of you who may not know, we're at Norfolk State University, the Spartans. Behold the green and gold. That's where we at right now. All right. Their mascot is the Spartan. They are the Norfolk State Spartans. Well, where did that come from? What's the origin? Read what you got. Verse 20. Arius, king of the Lysodemonians, to Onias, the high priest. Greeting. It is found in writing that the Lysodemonians. That the Lysodemonians. Come on. And Jews. And the Jews, right? Come on. Our brethren. They're what? Our brethren. They're, they're who? Our brethren. They brothers. All right. So what does that tell you about the Spartans? It tells you that they were black just like the Jews. Right. We all one family. All right. So we out here at Norfolk State University, um, cuts from the street, reporting, recording live. That's right. Shalom, family. Most high in Christ bless. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.